All right, so UFC 298, just two weeks away now. Very, very excited for this one because Alexander Volkanovsky, the great, back in his original weight class. Went up to 155. The man's only five foot six, okay? He's one of the best fighters on planet Earth. One of the best that certainly Australia's ever produced. And pound for pound, one of the very best still. But he's got a tough fight on his hands. Going up against Spain's Ilya Taporia, a man that's undefeated. 14 and 0. Beautiful boxing. I'll say this, some of the best boxing maybe that we've seen inside the UFC and of course, a well-rounded skill set as well. The man has great takedowns, excellent submissions and the boxing. That is where he truly, truly stands out. And coming into this fight against Alexander Volkanovsky, he is brimming with confidence. Just like you will be when you're undefeated, when you've never been beaten, when every time you've stepped out there, you have been the victor, you have dismantled your opponents. Of course, you're brimming with confidence. I remember that feeling being 15 and 0. You truly feel like no man alive can beat you in a fight, right? But of course, we all find out that maybe eventually, one day, that does happen. And will that be for Alexander Volkanovsky? Well, not according to Ilya Taporia and not according to the coaches of Ilya Taporia. So Portia's coach believes that he can beat Volkanovski in every department. That is just the better all-round mixed martial artist. Now, of course, a coach is going to say that. That's what a coach is supposed to say. Taporia is going to say that because he's not going to say, I think I might lose this fight. Nobody's going to do that, okay? No one's going to say that. That doesn't hype a fight. That doesn't sell a fight. And it doesn't put you in the right mindset. But he's got a point. He is bloody good. And he does have, as I say, some of the best boxing that we've ever seen in the UFC. I mean, if you just look at Taporia's last fight against Josh Emmett. I mean, listen, Josh Emmett is a ridiculously hard hitter. But he's not exactly Floyd Mayweather. I don't mean that as an insult. He's a tremendous wrestler and mixed martial arts. But the hands are good. They're powerful. They're strong. And they're dangerous. I mean, the way he knocked out Bryce Mitchell, that was sickening, okay? Absolutely flatlined him. But he kind of loads up and he swings. He could not touch a glove on Ilya Taporia. The way that Taporia reads his opponents, the way he rolls out of the way, takes away some of the power, uses footwork, cuts off the cage, faints constantly, goes to the jab, the body, the head, mixes things up. The way that he glides around the octagon, the man is poetry in motion. And let me tell you, he hits hard. Yes, he's only got four knockouts on his resume, but I'm surprised at that. That should be higher. The way that he went out there and submitted Bryce Mitchell, beat Bryce Mitchell at his own game, outboxed him, took him down, won by an arm triangle in round two. And now it's the biggest fight of his life. His first main event on pay-per-view in the UFC, taking on one of the best fighters that we've ever seen. Now, of course, Volkanovski, last time we saw him, okay, was against Islam Mahachev and he was knocked out. He got caught by a head kick in round one, nice and early, just over two minutes, put to sleep pretty much or almost. It was a nasty TKO. Volk regrets kind of taking that fight because he wasn't the best version of himself, okay? He said he was drinking beers. He likes a beer, what can I say? I had a few too many last night. <laughs> he wasn't overly disciplined. He'd had surgery not too long ago, but he thought he could do it. He thought he would roll the dice. He would dare to be great and it was a great opportunity, okay? In hindsight, everything's 2020. Okay, so maybe he shouldn't have taken that fight, but he did, right? So what are you going to do? You can't cry about it. It is what it is. You get back to work and you look for redemption. And that's what he's doing here. So you could make the argument that this is a good time for Taporia to take on Volkanovski because he's coming off that loss. Because when you get knocked out in that kind of fashion, it reminds you, you're only human, okay? It humbles you a little bit, okay? It makes you think, damn, these punches, these kicks that I could potentially eat, okay? These are life-changing. They are knockout-inducing and title taking and that's what Volkanovsky doesn't want to happen so what do you do right do you shell up do you go with inside yourself do you think crap it's all done it's all over I had a good run I had a good ride it's over I made some money 60 G's baby or do you say nah nah mate I'm going to bloody shell these. I <laughs> uh, can't do an Australian accent. No, but that's what you do. You dig deeper, you train harder, you push it to the next level and you get right back on the horse and you look for another victory against the next best number one contender, the hot open comer from Spain, the man that everyone's talking about and the man in Taporia that's saying that he's going to go out there and knock out Conor McGregor in round one if he even got that opportunity. So we'll get to that in a minute. In the boxing realm, we've got to remember, Taporia is fantastic. Of course he is. But Volkanovski's no slouch. I mean, Max Holloway proclaimed to be the best boxer in the UFC, bro. <laughs> when he put that beat down on Kelvin Cater and Fight Island. Over three fights, 
Volkanovski proved he's the better boxer. Okay, oh yeah, some elements of mixed martial arts and all the rest of it, but ultimately there was a lot of boxing in those fights. He outboxed Max Holloway, and the third time he shut him out, the speed, the way that he gets in and out, the way that he closes distance. And another interesting fact is that Volkanovski, even though he's the shorter guy by two inches, he's actually got longer arms by two and a half inches, maybe even three inches. Not the biggest advantage, because of course it's the wingspan. So whatever, if it's three inches, each arm's only one and a half inches longer. But still, you want to have that on your side. He's got slick boxing, and I don't think the chin will be compromised. There was a lot of talk that Volkanovski was coming back too quick. That was in October, November, December, January, February, okay? Four months, that's not bad, okay? He said that he did the correct protocol. He's been training for Islam Makachev twice, so the grappling is there, right? The jiu-jitsu submission defense is there. Even though the coach of uh, Ilya Tapori says, we can take him down, we can submit him. I don't know about that. If Islam Makachev struggles to take down uh, Volkanovski, I think Taporia will struggle. I'm not underestimating him. The best chances for Taporia to take him down is to land with the hands, right? Distract him, use them as feints, and then take him down. Surprise him or have him wobbled, okay? And to get a submission, yeah, he could do that. Of course he could. I'm not going to insult Taporia by saying that he couldn't submit Volkanovski, but the way that he would do that would be to soften him up on the feet, land a couple of shots and ground the pound, and then submit him. Like, for example, not to talk about myself, when I lost to George St. Pierre, he choked me out in round three. Okay, he took me down a few times and he wasn't able to get anywhere close to a submission. Okay, couldn't really pass guard, I would get back to my feet every time, right? But when he caught me with a big left hook, because I, uh, we know that uh, he does not see how to decide too well, so that was the, the strategy. Are you intoxicated? <laughs> no, I'm not intoxicated, right? He caught me in with a big left hook that dropped me. Couple more shots, I thought, F this, I'm getting back to my feet, but I'm not with it, I'm not compass mentis, okay? I'm dazed, I'm confused. Like most of the time. I'm dazed and confused so you're not thinking properly. And then he got me in the rear naked choke. Didn't tap though, like a proper man. <laughs> Ha, just kidding. Um, but that's the way Volkanovski would get submitted against Taporia. I think in a straight up jiu-jitsu match, right, he'd be, he'd be fine. He might even win that. We don't know. But in a mixed martial arts contest, Taporia is very, very confident that he gets the job done. And he's also confident that he takes out Conor McGregor inside one round. If he beats Volk, he wants a shot against Conor McGregor at some point down the line. Of course, everybody wants the red panty night. It's red panty night when you start to fight me. And rightly so. Why not? Take out the biggest star the sport's ever seen. Take him out in round one? Maybe. You never know. And guess what? Tapori has got lots of options if he gets through Volkanovski. If he gets through Volkanovski, Probably an immediate rematch when you look at the body of work for Volkanovski. I think he's earned that right. Also, Max Holloway's right there, but he's fighting just engaging for the BMF belts. But he's right there. And of course, we've got the bantamweight champ, Sugar Sean O'Malley. He says that when he beats Cheeto Vera, like he fully expects, and that's a great fight, could go either way, but he expects to beat Cheeto Vera. And then he said he's going to go up to 145 and he's going to take on Ilya Tapordia. I mean, if he goes out there and beats Vol and I go out there and beat Cheeto, that fight's happening next. So, right now in the camp of Aliyah Tapordia, things are good. He's excited. He's got his first title fight. He's going to beat Volkanovski in the first round. He's going to embarrass him. He's going to make a mockery. He's going to knock out Conor McGregor in round one. And then he's going to get to beat the bantamweight champion in Sugar, Sean O'Malley. These are all great plans. These are all a great future. The vision board is popping. But, of course, he's got to get through Alexander the Great Volkanovski first. And that is not an easy thing to do. Make no mistake. Anyway, there's a few thoughts on the upcoming title fight. I cannot wait for that one. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, ring the bell. I'll see you soon.